Dog Rescue. It's located in Hastings. Brandy owns property out there. She's on five acres. Um, two and a half acres of that is all fenced in. Um, she rescues dogs from all over the United States. I mean literally all over the United States. They're not just in the surrounding state area. And she can speak a little bit about how she gets that done um, because there's a big there's a big group out there that helps get it done. But um, bring dogs into the rescue that are basically scheduled for euthanization. And they come out of shelters and um, they come to us and we go through and basically vet the dog, get them spayed or neutered, bring them up to date on all vaccination shots, test them for heartworm if they're heartworm positive. We, we go forward and treat them. And, um, Brandy's philosophy, which is a very good one, is that when a dog comes to the rescue, they get to do basically whatever they want to do as far as running off energy, digging, playing, eating as much as they want, drinking. The only rule is they don't bite another dog and they don't bite people. Those are the only two things they are not allowed to do, but they, have, they come into the rescue and are, are just allowed to get all this pent-up energy that they have, you know, kind of evened out because they've been in shelters and they've basically just been in small cages. Um, and then we go through like a rehabilitation process basically with these dogs and um, get them ready to rehome and, um, and then hopefully find the best match out there for that particular dog. Okay. And uh, maybe Granny, you could talk about what your biggest challenges are. Finances. We are uh, um, as all. So I, I guess financially, that's probably our largest challenge always um, with a nonprofit. Um, I have to say that I am so deeply touched by what you are doing um, that you guys get it. That the side of rescue that I see so often is the seedy side. You know, the dogs that are damaged, or the dogs that have been hurt, or are perhaps living in a in a place that. Is, is, is undesirable and to actually be amongst people that get it, that treat their animals well, that are writing about the loyalty and the love and the compassion an animal can bring to you is just so deeply touching to me because so often we see out at the rescue we just see you know the side that you know most of the public doesn't and, and um, have to go kind of from A to Z sort of thing. And so thank you so much. I mean, it, it's an incredible experience. I almost can't talk because I'm just, <laughs> I'm this close. <laughs> so it, it's like, and I don't tear up. I mean, I, I'm a pretty tough cookie. You have to be kind of a tough cookie to do what we do. And uh, so I don't, I don't get this close. I'm sorry. Right. I'm the one Problems on the cross. I'm the dog. When they come in. I cry when they leave. Yeah, she doesn't care. She I cry when I think about it. When I have puppy. It doesn't matter. Um, and, um, so yeah, essentially what we do is um, hold dogs that are about to be euthanized, and the ones that we, we call them dogs in danger, or dogs in dire situations, and we pull them in and get them healthy. Uh, if a dog has medical issues other than just a normal vet spay, neuter sort of thing, um, we have one dog get, come and have cancer, we've had three heartworm positive dogs this year, that sort of thing. And um, we, then when they're ready for adoption, some are ready in a month, some aren't ready for a year. Some are never ready. Um, part of our place is a sanctuary for dogs that probably will not be able to be home anywhere else. Um, we're at a crossroads with Braveheart Re Rescue right now, and I'll just mention that we're at a place where essentially we're either going to explode, which we are, which is very difficult because I'm having to just say no to dogs that I really, really want to take. But I'm just out of room. And, and also in terms of keeping up with all the work, um, we're at a crossroads as well in terms of um, just the, the um, what would you call it? I don't want to call it book work because it isn't just book yeah, work. Well, yeah, I mean beyond the financial, it's it's basically right. staff. Yeah, you know, it's I staff. Mean, it's a 24-7 yeah. job. It is. You know, dogs don't get Thanksgiving Day. Yeah, you're not dealing with <laughs> boxes. You know, you know you're not so Thanksgiving. A dog yeah. has to be fed. Yeah. You know. So therefore, neither do we. You know. All right. And then started doing uh, rescue kind of off and on with the, along with the boarding because I was asked to, I was in the area and people would call and say, can you check this out? And then finally, um, a year ago, May, I had to make the decision. 
am I going to board or am I going to do rescue? Because it wasn't working at all. Doing both. It just means that it was too much. And so even though I knew that I was going to take a, you know, I knew I was going to take a big hit, but I went to rescue for my artist. You know, I boarded, I did that, and I, and through that I learned a lot. And I really think it was the preface to what I do now, because now I know what I, how to do what I do. And um, so now we've been um, full time rescue for about a year and a half. Uh, could either of you, uh, I just want to mention for the people that just came in, we're talking to uh, representatives from Braveheart Rescue, and you're in Hastings, right? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. uh, either one, one of you want to share a, a quick uh, kind of a brief success story? You want to talk about Ralph? Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. There are some, I shared it with Alan on the phone the first time I talked to him. There was a dog that came uh, up from, I believe it was from Sioux City, Iowa. Um, he did not come to us initially, but he went to a, a, an area, Humane Society, and um, Humane Societies put these dogs through testing to mm -hmm. see what their temperament is mm -hmm. like. Well, this dog, they did the hand test with it, and they decided this dog was, you know, basically aggressive around food, and they were stuck. What are we going to do? In most cases, it, they don't put them out on the floor then, and they may eventually get euthanized. Well, we were lucky enough, we had a contact that could pull that person, or pull that person, pull, see, I think of them as people, <laughs> pull that dog for us, and the dog came to us. Um, and yes, the dog was very food aggressive because that dog was so hungry. He was a oh, big dog. Was he stuck. was a great day in the lab mix. Yeah. Yeah. Black great day in the lab yeah. So we brought him in, brought him in, and you know, so the first thing he got was all the food he wanted to eat. And once he finally started feeling satisfied, he calmed down a little bit. Brandy worked with him. We got him to the point where, you know, he would take food into him. He would sit. And, you know, you could put the food down without him lunging at it. And um, the, I knew that we finally broke through that because when I was working there, I had gone in and, uh, to give him his food. And I was, Brandy had taught me what to do. So I'm there with the food. I put the well, sits. I put the food down. Ralph licks my face mm -hmm. before he even goes to the food. <laughs> so that dog, I mean, the dog was with us for quite a while because he was, he was, he was in rough shape. But he eventually got adopted by a wonderful couple that lives in Stillwater, and um, the gentleman was running for city council, and he was taking this dog door to door with him campaigning. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we went from a dog that was just about to be euthanized because they said he couldn't pass the, the test to he's practically a, a politician manager. now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's a campaign manager. So, yeah. And there's just there's so many stories like that. So basically what you need from the community, I think it is support from volunteers and money. Yeah. So those yeah. are probably the two biggest things.